All right, folks, Elimination Chamber is in the books. Like, it literally just happened as the recording of this. If you can't tell, I'm tired. I just throw on this hoodie because, you know, I've been up since 3 a.m. for this stupid show. But it was a good show overall. And I think it answered a lot of questions heading into Mania, and, uh, which we'll get into. And yeah, the people at Perf got a fantastic show. Um, but let's get right into it because I can't think of a clever opening. All right, starting off on the kickoff show, we had the Kabuki Warriors of Asuka and Kerry Sang against uh, Candice LeRae and Indy Hartwell for the women's tag team title match. This was, I gave this match a B minus. This, uh, this match just felt like it could have uh, been on Raw. And the only reason why it wasn't, it was on the, the kickoff show is because Indy is from Australia. So she got the hometown uh, pop. But, you know, they they were given a decent amount of time. And LeRae and Indy, they showed not just like a jobber team there. They can uh, provide something to the tag team division. You know, if they want to run this back in a month or so, it wouldn't be mad. But yeah your standard raw match. The hot tag with Indy was done really well. It was tease, tease, tease. And when it finally happened, the crowd you know, went wild for it. So that was cool. But yeah, Kabuki Warriors defend the titles. I had Indy as the MVP only because the hometown pop was massive. And you know, does this have any impact on the future? Not really. It, it just, we'll see the Kabuki Warriors hold the titles in the EO Bailey build as we all expected, but fun little opening match in the kickoff. No harm, no foul. Let's move on. And next to, to kick off the actual like main broadcast of the show was the women's elimination chamber match featuring Becky Lynch, Bianca Belair, Liv Morgan, Tiffany Stratton, Raquel Rodriguez, and Naomi. So yeah, I gave that match an A minus. It was a really, you know, really fun match to start off the show off with. Really strong opener. It showed uh it was won by Becky, Becky Lynch. Becky went from pillar to post. I think that's the thing. First, the first uh, person to win it. Uh, the women showed that less is more. They didn't do as many spots as like a typical Lynch Chamber match, like any super high spots or any like pod spots. They didn't do as much, but the ones that they did do, they made sure to uh, make sure to make it mean something including uh, Tiffany Stratton, who hit a swanton off a pod. Yeah, uh, at, all women had a chance to shine. Shout out to Raquel, who, if you don't know, is battling. I'm, I'm not going to uh, attempt to uh, announce the thing just because if I butchered, I'll feel bad. But, you know, she came back from a pretty serious uh, disease or something like that. And it, and she still came out, did her thing, and no one looked out of place. Like I said, every woman sh uh, had her moment to shine. Every woman got to do her thing. And what was cool about this one is uh, typically like when they do Lumish Chamber matches, like the last two are kind of given their own time to do their thing. Like almost like a separate match to follow to. This one was quick succession. Uh, Liv, so Liv got a quick pin on Bianca. And then immediately after that, Becky Lynch hit Liv with a manhandle slam to win it. So it was like a boom, boom, final three. Uh, it was good. So I thought the uh, MVP of the match was Liv Morgan. She kind of helped. She was the glue of the match. She kind of uh, had interactions with all the people. She did her thing. She took a lot of uh, bumps too, but she was able to uh, shine more than others and show that she can be a workhorse person moving forward hopefully leading to a cool match for her at mania that's um yeah a minus becky won Liv was mvp good opener all right we move right into judgment day versus new catch republic which is tyler Bate and pete stun pete dunn's new tag team name and this was for the wd tag team uh titles i said it before in my uh i said it in my preview that this match had virtually zero build now, in between that recording that and the show today on SmackDown, they had uh, Bait and Dunn beat Don Mysterio and JD McDonough, to which Damon Priest and Finn Balor came out, tried to get one up on a uh, new catch and did not. So that was basically the only build for this match. But this was fun. I gave this a straight A. 
I had no build, I had no expectations. It was just four dudes who went out there. They were, they were given plenty of time. I think it was like 20 something minutes and just given uh, 20 minutes to go show out. And that's what he did. It was awesome. It was near falls. It was spots. It started off uh, great with Dom taking uh, Mike Rome's spot and trying to an, uh, announce the Judgment Day, at, like do the announcing part of that. For, and er, he just got booed out the building. He got, Dom got called a wanker. Uh, and then eventually got kicked out uh, by the ref. And at least on Peacock's side, the broadcast went dark for a bit. I thought it was technical errors, but I saw a couple of tweets uh, potentially that you know everyone's flipping Dom off so they didn't cut it just because they didn't want a bunch of bill fingers in the air on a broadcast which I get uh bait showed out I have him as my MVP of the match he uh hit an extended extended uh airplane spin on Damien he hit a bunch of moves he, him and uh Pete Dunn proved that they belong in this tag division and they proved that they are future tag team champions as soon as like uh, the either the, the titles are split or they introduce a new title, which our one comes hopefully soon. Each show needs a, a set of uh, champions. But yeah, Bait was MVP. I gave this an A. Judgment Day retained. Now moving forward, they can. I don't see this be ran back for uh, WrestleMania. This is a, as far as Judgment Day winning, this is pretty clean. I do see them like re, re going back to a feud with Awesome Truth. Our truth the Miz or DIY heading in, heading into Mania, potential three way for the titles or just awesome truth, we'll see. But fun match, they are given time, and they prove that just because you don't have a, a decent story all the time doesn't mean you won't have a decent match. So it was fun. Uh, next segment was okay, it wasn't a match, but next segment was the Gracer Walla effect with special guest Cody Rose and Seth Rollins, and I'll just say it this. This could have been on like on raw salts we out there to said this could have been an email <laughs> uh and the only reason why it was put on the show because uh, grayson waller another aussie but he got a huge entrance he did a shoey with a he a current or former ufc legend i don't i don't apologies for not remembering the name but he got a huge like uh pop coming out but yeah this was like a standard talking segment uh we did get to annou annou announcements out of this that one seth rollins is almost medically cleared and two cody rhodes calls out the rock for a match between now and mania and the stuff saying oh, i got your back uh this led austin theory to gr uh f grabbing the the mic out of grayson's hand uh and using the rocks catchphrases before getting beat down by seth and cody hitting there their finishers or signature moves and it was funny because like uh the whole time Austin was going off Grayson was in the back like looking at his hand and looking at Austin looking at his hand like because he had the mic stolen so he's just looking like perplexed all the time and didn't even jump in when Austin was getting his ass kicked so I gave it a C it wasn't it wasn't bad it just it wasn't it, I guess it was a time killer intermission almost so it's weird having Cody Rhodes and Seth Rollins be part of the, the bathroom break of a show, but that's what it was. Uh, Grayson show, Grayson was great here. I gave him MVP of the segment just because the pop and his like mannerisms behind the scenes when Austin was going off was great. So yeah, a raw segment made it onto the perf show, but oh well. Let's move forward. All right, we have the men's uh, next. We have the men's elimination chamber match uh, between Drew McIntyre, Randy Orton, Bobby Lashley, Kevin Owens, Logan Paul, and LA Knight. Yeah, this match was physical. I mean, physical. It was hard hitting. Every move you almost felt it. Um, there wasn't as many like high spots to say like tall spots as the uh women's match it had I had a couple like logan paul jumped off a pod onto drew but uh th this had a lot of like actual like chamber pod spots including drew mcintyre in the beginning just getting his face bashed in on pods the whole like for a good solid minute or so 
and Bobby Lashley spearing the absolute shit out of Logan Paul through a pod. And it, it, it was boom. Like, it was, I don't know how to describe it. It was just six dudes beating the hell out of each other. Like, there was bruise on, bruises on bruises on bruises on bruises throughout this match. I gave it a A. It was, oh, it was good. <laughs> I gave the uh, MVP to Bobby Lashley, not only for the logo spot, but he showed uh, showed up and showed out his power throughout this thing it, up until he got eliminated and it was Bobby Lashley like he had me believing oh crap they might give it to him I don't know they might this the way he was showing up or they might have him being up like final two or something like that I gave it to him he uh at least for the, I guess the first half of the match he carried but I give a slight second place MVP just behind Bobby to Logan Paul, who I think the last half was carried by him. So with that, uh, Drew, uh, Drew McIntyre won at the end after Randy hits. Uh, so Randy at, to end the match, Randy hits RKO on Logan Paul, and you know hits a one, two, three, called a day. So that left Randy and Drew like as the last two they were fighting, and Logan Paul took a sweet old time getting out of the ring, which proved to be intentional. By Logan Paul, because as uh, Randy Orton had Drew on the ropes, get ready to take him out and win. Logan Paul hit Randy with brass knucks, which allowed Drew to take the pin. So I do believe that that's look look for that to be a uh, match going forward. At least talked about Logan taking out Randy. He has already has a thing with KO. So usually I know typically there's like a multi man match for a title at every uh, Mania. So look for that to be the multi man match. Uh, for the U.S. title, who knows? We'll throw smart people in there, put it on top of a ladder or something. I don't know. But again, this gets an A. Drew won, so we, we confirmed Drew Seth for WrestleMania. And last but certainly not least, we have the main event, which was Rhea Ripley versus Nia Jax for the Women's World Title. And this was all about Rhea, as in the the build was all about Rhea. The Go Home Raw was all about Rhea. This was show was all about Rhea. She got the hometown reception. You could tell it meant a lot to her. And because of that, they smartly, very smartly had her play basically uh, face on this match from the beginning. You know, Nia, a, as much as a, I'm not the biggest fan of hers, she's a fantastic heel. She gets the booze. So, you know, Rio is going to be faced whether she wanted to or not. So they just played into it. And they did like a traditional heel face match, like title match. Nia dominated most of the match. She uh, beat Rhea down. She hit moves and Rhea kept having to kick out. Every time Rhea tried to build offense, Nia just cut it off. Even and in the same spot, Rhea, I'm sorry, Nia hit a Samoan drop on Rhea onto the announcer's table and then drove her through said table with a elbow drop. Then took her to the ring, hit her annihilator, but Rhea kicked out as a super like hero, hero white meat baby face move. Rhea then uh, later on hit a superplex on Nia, then hit a riptide for the one, two, three. So yeah, Rio retained her title. You know, Nia Jax was the MVP of this, carried the match throughout, played off the uh, villain, let Rio look so good in front of her home crowd. So Nia MVP, I gave this match a B. It, it didn't feel like anything like we wouldn't see on Raw. There was not that was that extra tinge, like the extra like gear, sort of say, for it to become super duper elevated. Again, not bad match, perfectly fine match. The crowd helped. They were hot for Rio the entire time. The presentation helped. Rio was treated as a hometown star. But this felt like, again, like a match we could see on, on Raw. I gave it a B. It wasn't bad. Nice MVP. And it ended with Rio getting the fireworks, getting the he uh, heroes thing. Like she just won the damn title for the first time or something like that. Perth was a beautiful city, by the way. So they're. There's that. So overall, for the pay-per-view, I gave it a A, even though there was no like twist or turns whatsoever in the show. All, all matches were predictable, and the talking segment was kind of a letdown. The crowd was into it. The whole from start to finish, the crowd was hot. And anytime a crowd is hot, you have to bump it up. The action was fantastic. Anytime the action is fantastic like that, you have to bump it up. And yeah. It, it's it's rare for a show that was about three hours three and some change three hours some change 
for everyone wrestling to get a chance to shine. And that's exactly what happened. From the kickoff show, Asuka and Carrie got to uh, do their thing. Indy got the hometown a welcome. Candice LeRae showed why she's underrated in division. Everyone in the chamber match got their uh, moment. The tag team match got uh, enough time for everybody to show what they can do. Dom was fantastic as a little bitch boy on the side. The main event was great. Yeah, everyone who wrestled tonight got got a chance to prove what, why they, why they're there, and that's rare for a, a wrestling show, especially as a big one. So they got an A. Again, the crowd was into it. It was awesome. It felt special because of that crowd. So shout out to Per for being awesome. The overall MVP, I gave it to uh, Logan Paul. Not so much for what he did in the ring because he he showed out, but like he took a huge bump from Lashley. He was, you know, the biggest D-bag in the match. And he played up. He knows what, who he is. He knows the crowd's not a fan of his. So he plays that up all, anytime he's in, in the ring. He, you know, got in Kevin Owens' face. He furthered that feud. Like, like I said before, he added Randy Orton into the mix for uh, getting Randy Orton to uh, probably take his ass out soon. Logan Paul knows who he is. He, he, and we, as fans, take him for granted. I'm not saying like he's he's better than a lot of people think or a lot of people want to admit I should say but Logan Paul kind of like Liv was the glue to the women's match Logan Paul was more, more or less so along with Bobby Lashley the glue of the men's match the match of the night I had as the men's elimination chamber match that thing was just whoo. like I said the women's picked their picked their spots a little bit more smartly and made the most of it but the men's match was just yeah, we're just gonna kick each other's asses for a bit. And whoever comes up on top, on top. They told the story of Drew sliming his way as he has been the last couple of weeks, sliming his way to a victory, gets to go to Mania. And it was just from bell to bell, just entertaining, hard hitting, and awesome. Can't ask much more than that. And finally, like, what does this card mean going forward? Well, now we do have three confirmed matches for Mania. Well, oh, sorry, we do have four confirmed matches for Mania. We have Roman Cody, Io Bailey, Seth Drew, Rhea uh, Becky, and based on what happened at Perf, we can uh, assume th uh, like three more matches are going to be added with AJ Styles versus LA Knight. Looks like a lock. Uh, Logan Paul, Kevin Owens, and Randy Orton will be involved in some United States title match, and also Bianca Belair and Tiffany Stratton kind of look to be a lock too for Mania, based on how tonight went, how they've been acting. So we also all but confirm that Cody Rose and The Rock will get physical before Mania in some way. Although a match has been put out there, I'm not so sure. I, if we don't get that, the rumored tag match, we'll get like just The Rock and Cody Rose trading finishers from between now and Mania. The the major PLE before Mania cleared some things up for Mania and got, you know, if you weren't excited yet on the road to WrestleMania, you should be now based on that awesome show. Unless you were sleeping, which I don't blame you. I woke up at three, so I woke up actually work like 2.45, so I could be up for the kickoff show. Why, I don't know. So yeah, that's uh, Unleash Your Chamber. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below or on socials. Um, it's at, it's heartfelt everywhere. Uh, be on the lookout for this week's review preview, which, I'll, which we'll dive more to, into the weekly shows of the week of the last week, but yeah. Those are my thoughts on Elimination Chamber. Let me know what you guys thought of it. And let me know who was your MVP of the night for Elimination Chamber. But with that, I'll catch you guys in the next video. I'm Heartfelt. Peace.